Hi, I'm Verna V. Nickelberry, Director of the Nation's Global Partners Initiative. Why is partnership important in ministry? The principle of partnership is scriptural and a covenant-based means to effectively spread the gospel message. In the days of Jesus, the Bible say the people who received of his ministry also ministered back to him of their substance. Partnering with us is an awesome way to effectively give back. At The Nation, we consistently give back to communities in various and sundry ways. You becoming a global partner will expand our capacity to help others. Help us today and agree to support to this worthwhile cause, prayerfully and financially. For only $33 a month or a one-time annual gift of $396, we together can make a difference. Your gifts are tax deductible. Scan the QR code for Givelify, Cash App, or PayPal. You can also mail your donation to the address on the screen. When you become an Empowered Life Global Partner, we will keep you informed of what is going on in ministry. Place you on our Tower of Power prayer list along with receiving gifts periodically. Partner with us today and allow us to become your extension in ministry. Welcome and thank you for joining us for another session of Empowering You for Life Bible Study with Pastor Andrew and Holy Nation Church of Memphis. Holy Nation is a church where our vision is to evangelize the lost, disciple the believer, and empower the disciple. Located in the Raleigh Bartlett area of Memphis, Tennessee, we are an ever-growing community of believers. Get your Bibles as we study God's Word and let's get empowered for life. Well, well, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I am Superintendent Andrew Pepina Jr. And I thank God for you tuning in. Listen, I want you to like and share, like and share, like this teaching and share this teaching right now. If you're on Facebook, share, share, share. Do that for me right now before we get started. We have a wonderful uh, teaching for you on today and you don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss this. We're going to talk about tools for success. Everybody wants to be a winner. Everybody has a challenge and you're going to have to have some tools so you can be successful. And we thank God for you. Like, share, like, share, and do this for me while you are, are listening. Uh, you may want to write this down. We have a new Facebook page, Superintendent Andrew E. Propina Jr. Superintendent Andrew E. Propina Jr. It is a professional page, and we want you to go and hit the like button on that. Like that, follow us, and let everybody know about what's going on here at the nation. That's right. We thank God for all of our family, our friends, our partners, our members, our ambassadors, those of you first-time viewers coming uh, to this platform, whether it be on Facebook or YouTube, Facebook or YouTube. You can find us on YouTube. If you're there, go on and share this teaching as well. Let them know that Holy Nation is on Empowering You for Life Bible Study. Superintendent Andrew E. Pepina Jr. is here, and we thank God for you. Listen, uh, uh, Holy Nation is located 3333 Old Brownsville Road in the Raleigh Barlett area of Memphis, Tennessee. Amen. So we we look forward to seeing you. Services began every Sunday at 10 a.m. We are a family church with a global vision. We are a family church with a global vision, and we are excited about what the Lord is doing on those seven and a half acres that we are sitting on. And God is truly moving by his strength, might, and power. People are being healed, delivered, and set free. And we thank God in this season. Come on now, uh, go on and share. Share this teaching. Share it. Hit that share button. Hit that share button. And we look forward to getting your pen, your paper, as we get ready to proceed. Uh, you know, a whole lot of things are going on in this season. You might see my little shirt right here, AP Superintendent Andrew Papina Jr. for Financial Secretary. We have in the Church of God in Christ, we have things going on every four years like uh, uh, the United States is we have elections, national 
election. You know, the Church of God in Christ is a global ministry. We have ministries all over the world and doing wonderful things in the body of Christ. Uh, Bishop, uh, Presiding Bishop J. Drew Sheard is our uh, our prelate, our presiding bishop. We have uh, 11 more uh, general board members that are uh, with him, and they are doing great works for the kingdom, and we thank God for all of them. Uh, of course, we have treasurer, we have finance secretary, we have general secretary and trustee board and judiciary board. We have others as well. And every four years, uh, um, a, a, if there's a leading wooing of the spirit, uh, men and women put their hats in the ring and everybody is going, we want the best of the best to be able to do uh, their very best for the kingdom in ministry. And so we thank God for this opportunity. Uh, the election will be in November. The election will be in November. And so if you could pray for us, uh, pray uh, our strength, support us, and those of you delegates that can vote for us. Andrew E. Perpiner, Jr., for financial secretary. Enough of that. So let's go on a little further, and we thank God. We are talking about tools for success. Tools for success. And let me know if you're on Facebook, come on and talk back to me. If this is your first time on Facebook, uh, uh, let us know. Uh, that you're out there where you're from. If you're on YouTube, do the same thing. We will see it. Everybody will see it. And we thank God for you. Tools for success. So what does it really mean to be successful? Successful, you know, uh, that can be an elusive term. Uh, Webster defines success uh, as uh, accomplishing an aim or a purpose. You uh, parents want to raise their children to to be upright and all of that. And, and when they grow up and do well, you could say that you are successful. Uh, if you're in business, you want to have uh, you create a God gives you a vision. You have skill set and you began to uh, uh, uh speak those things and work those things and God blesses those things. And you, before you know it, you are providing uh, work and jobs and careers for other people, other families. God is entrusting you. And you can say that is success. And you can uh, be on a job or whatever. That is success. The, the key is accomplishing your aim, accomplishing your purpose, whatever that objective is. Uh, that's what we want to do. And and you can just put that in 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 the in the comment or the follow through, follow through. You just want to make sure that you are following through. And as we go, listen, go to Genesis one and twenty six. Genesis one and 26. Hello, Holy Nation, uh, the greatest church in the world. We thank God for you, all of our members. Go on and make some noise out there. <clears throat> uh, we thank God for First Lady uh, Supervisor Shirley Perpiner. We thank God for my lovely wife. I know she's out there somewhere. Go on and make some noise out there, honey. Let me see what you're doing, what you're doing. I'm, I'm trying to keep up with everybody and 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 just get, get everything in, in this place here so we can go forward. Margaret, I see you out there. Uh, don't forget to like, share, like, share. If you're on YouTube, subscribe, hit that subscribe button and uh, comment when you hear something that blesses you. If you have a question, put it out there. Uh, um, I, I'm not saying I know all the answers, but I do know how to find those answers. Amen. And so we thank God. Thank God. Genesis 1, 26, and let's pray. Most gracious and eternal Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for health and strength. God, we thank you for each and every soul that's listening, that's watching, that's praying, that's supporting. Hallelujah, that has a need. God, touch them now, God. And hallelujah, touch me, decrease me, and increase thee in me that I might speak, herald, preach, proclaim, teach your unadulterated gospel with power and clarity. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. Genesis 1 and 26. Genesis 1 and 26. Uh, it says, uh, 1 chapter 1, verse 26, God said, 
uh, before you, you, you know, before you talk or get up in front of anyone, including your family or your spouse, uh, he's, God said something and then God created and then God blessed. In Genesis 1, 26, 31, God said something and God created and God blessed. So um, in the, in that first uh, part of that, that, that chapter in that verse, he said, it says God said, or God uttered, or God muttered, or he planned. In other words, if you want to be successful in life, you're going to have to be able to utilize uh, the vehicle that God has placed inside of us. That's our words. You know, you tell the little kids, use your words, use your words. You know, yeah, yeah, you, you have to, once you meditate on it, you're going to have to uh, use your words. So before you talk or get in front of anyone, including your family, I don't don't get so uh, relaxed in front of your family that you uh, cannot articulate uh, what what's on your heart, including your family, your spouse. Pray first and meditate. Plan so you can be clear about what you are going to say. You don't have to have it all ready. You don't have. To, sometimes we. Uh, uh, we we wait and we pontificate because we don't know all of what we're going to say. But but be ready to speak and uh, but only speak about what you uh, have ready. Okay. So God said, and then God created that creation. He shaped. In other words, he went to work. He began to produce uh, towards his plan. So you got to go to work. God said. God created. God went to work on what you have planned. Faith without works is literally hope without a future. Faith without working is literally hope without a future. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10 says, whatever your hands find to do, do it with your might, whatever you have with your strength, with all the zest and vigor. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. You got to leave it all on the table. You got to leave it here. You, well, I'm going to rest. Listen, 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 listen. Give it all every day. Give it everything you have and God will give you rest. He will give you that peace. You'll work up, wake up refreshed and ready to go again. Okay. So leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it on, leave it on the, the mat, leave it on the table, whatever it is, do it. Okay. And then God blessed. In other words, God pronounced directives over his work. So you got to speak it, you got to create it, get to work, produce it, and then you have to pronounce blessings over what you have done, okay? You got that tools for success. This is just the beginning. We're going to get down into when you begin to look at tools and a toolbox and things that there are various and sundry things in a toolbox, according to if you are a carpenter, if you're a mechanic, or whatever it is, there, there are different uh, sets of tools. You know, a carpet might have a hammer, it might have a planer, might have a ruler, a trowel, or whatever. Uh, a mechanic may have uh, box wrenches and all those things, and uh, 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 pliers and vice grips and things like that for a mechanic. When you're dealing with you, you have to understand what needs to be in your success toolbox. And here's one great thing that needs to be in your toolbox. Does anybody know what that is? Da, 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 and the clock is running. Does anybody know what that great thing is that needs to be in your toolbox? Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you that one great thing, <clears throat> that cornerstone thing that needs to be in your toolbox is you is you all in all in your mind your body your spirit uh um uh, your strength your faith all of that has to be you are your greatest asset yes you are your greatest asset okay so when we begin to think about you 
There's some things about you that we need to deal with. The spiritual foundation of you. Uh, what does that mean, Pastor? Your relationship with Jesus Christ. What about you? Do you have, do you know Jesus in the pardoning of your sin? Do you, are you all together with you? Are you sometimes up, sometimes down? Sometimes you're like the boy, you're in the in the fire and sometimes you're in uh, the cold, you're in and out, you're up and down, you're pontificating when it re regards your spiritual relationship, um, it, you know, all of these things, relationship with Jesus Christ. And then the acknowledgement of the Holy Ghost indwelling inside of you. You need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And then you need to acknowledge, you got to understand that before you began to walk these deep waters of life and stepping out uh, in the the deep uh, as it relates to vision and things of that nature, dreams and ambitions, you're going to need to know the Lord and you're going to have to acknowledge that the Holy Ghost is present in dwelling and you listen and follow his lead, leading, his wooing. The, uh, the Holy Ghost began to speak to us and talk to us. They're not going to yell. He's going to talk as a gentleman. And you're going to have to yield. You have to become a, have a spirit of meekness and yield to that. So, so uh, are you ready for that? Your spiritual foundation, you, your greatest tool. It's bad to have a cheap tool. It's bad. Have you ever bought a cheap tool for some important work? You, you know, uh, it, oh my God, it's bad to uh, uh, in a mechanic to get a cheap tool and 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 the the boat or whatever you're trying to turn is stronger than the tool that you have. Mm. Isn't that something? You know Satan is going to come against you. The moment he hears you are making up your mind, the moment he hears that you're going to trust the Lord, he's coming and he's going to have something that's going to be contentious for you. And you are going to have to be able to come against that thing. And so uh, you got to be that tool. You got to be that cornerstone tool. Go with me to Proverbs 22 and 1. Proverbs 22 and 1. Get that for me. Amen. Amen. Brother Matthew, thank God for you. We see you. God bless you. Um, Proverbs 22 and 1. All right, let's read. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Look, look how, how the wisdom of God is, is showing you what to get to put in your toolbox. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Uh, it's almost like for those of y'all to understand what I mean, if you have, I, I, I'm going to bring my ratchet set next time. You, you got the, you got the, the handle and you have the, the, the socket that goes on the handle. Those two together, you can get something done. You can turn a boat, you can turn or whatever. It makes that full wrench, but it's bad to just have either the handle or the socket. Neither those separate are not going to work. Okay, so a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Somebody would say, I need the silver and gold immediately in my toolbox. The rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass and are punished by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Isn't that something? You, If you're going to be a master mechanic, if you're going to be a master carpenter, if you're going to be a mason, uh, to be able to build those bridges and uh, uh, lay bricks and things of that nature. If you're going to have to be able to be a, a great designer, you're going to have to know 
what is important and what to don't don't minor on majors and major on minors, but you're going to have to be able to know what goes where. And that starts immediately with you. You are that master tool. So we should be more careful to pursue that course of life and do those things which we may obtain and retain. Listen, a good name then that way and those things by which we may raise and increase a great estate. For great riches bring great cares with them and expose men to danger, but add no real value to a man. So in other words, you can you can cut across life. You can you can you can make shortcuts and you can make uh, uh, giant leaps and people can help you in certain ways and stuff like that, but it will come to naught later. It will, it, it, it doesn't, it, no, nobody's doing you a favor to help you when you need to have that strength through the work that you're doing. So the first thing is, uh, as we deal with our you, the, the the you as that, that greatest asset, your spiritual foundation. Then the next one is your educational foundation. So when it comes to you, uh -huh, you put in the chat, I am my greatest asset. I am my greatest asset. You being your greatest asset, your spiritual fundus, your spiritual foundation, uh, having a relationship with Jesus Christ, praying, building that relationship, acknowledging um, that, that the Holy Ghost as indwelling within you and you leading and listening to uh, what he is saying and his direction, that's part of it, uh, of that. And then the, so your spiritual foundation, then your educational foundation, your educational foundation, okay? So let's go to 2 Timothy 2 and 15. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. This is uh, Superintendent Andrew Perpiner Jr. And this is Holy Nation Church Empowering You for Life Bible Study. And we are talking about the tools for success. Amen. So 2 Timothy 2.15, uh, it, it's, it's a familiar scripture. Study, study to show thyself approved unto God. Stop right there. Study. Greek word means to exert yourself. Oh, oh my God. We don't want to exert ourselves. You're going to have to exert yourself. You're going to have to put your time in. Some people, they don't want to exert themselves. They don't want to spend the time because usually our time uh, is not the time like God's time. We're not synced up with God's time, but but we, we, we should have our time is in his hand. But a lot of times we don't want to uh, spend the proper amount. We don't because we really don't know what that is, but you need to work there until the Lord gives you leave. Amen. Not you give you leave, but but God gives you leave. And so they agree with study, exert yourself to show yourself approved unto God not unto man, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly dividing the word of truth, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, a man faithfully, a woman faithfully performing their duty so that when he looks over what he has done, they look over what they've done, he may not blush. And oh my God, you know, you build a fence and it's crooked. Uh, you painted a wall and you can see what color the wall used to be. Right, rightly dividing the word of truth. That word here rendered uh, rightly dividing. It occurs uh, nowhere else in the New Testament. It means properly to cut straight, to divide right, rightly dividing. I'm going to say that again, to cut straight, to divide right, to cut straight, to divide right. It, it takes more time to do it wrong than it does to do it right. So do it right the first time. Uh, 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 
do it right the first time. If you don't, if you don't exert yourself, young people, and and and, uh, and some of uh, us as well. Uh, if you're in school, uh, if you don't exert yourself, if you don't study, stay up, burn the midnight oil, you might find yourself doing that same class over again. How about that? And you have paid for it and you're going to have to pay for it again. Isn't that something? There is nothing in there in school about it. if you fail a class that you get your money back. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. If you fail a class, you don't get your money back. And if you plan on passing and getting a diploma or whatever, you will have to pay again. Isn't that something? So uh, reading, math. IT and science. We got AI going crazy out of the wazoo now. Don't be afraid of taking hard classes. We're going to talk about hard classes in a minute. Don't be afraid in this educational foundation. Don't be afraid of taking hard classes. It's all the way you look at it. It's a, a perspective. Uh, your business of expertise. First one is reading math. ID. Don't be afraid to take hard classes. Second one is your business of expertise. You should become an expert in something. You should become an expert in something and follow that which you are an expert in. Uh, so, so uh, what is it? What is it? Um, uh, and a master of none. You know, you're you're um, somebody put that in there so I can see it. Uh, but but uh, uh, you're a jack of all trades and a master of none, and you expect people to handle you the same way in all that you do. No, we are living in a season. Uh, these are uh, tumultuous times. These are. Uh, very sensitive times, if you have not noticed. Uh, and uh, everything, everything is about precision. Everything is about being precise. And so <clears throat> you need to be an expert and you desire somebody to be an expert in your life. And so when we began to think about the educational piece, you want to make sure that you are an expert. I know uh, in the HBCUs back in the day when they all, uh, and, and, and uh, African-Americans couldn't go to other schools and things of that nature, uh, um, they said, well, they're gonna either be a preacher or a teacher. It, it was general, it was general humanities. And you're gonna know a little something about everything. And that, that was great and they're still great. But when it comes time to uh, deal with how you're going to expend your funds, your monies and stuff like that, where you place them, it, we're becoming a little more surgical in uh, how, what you, uh, your studies will be. Okay. Expert. An expert is an advanced knowledge or skill. An example of an expert of expertise is a master gardener, a master electrician, a master plumber. Oh my God, the great skill or knowledge in a particular field or hobby. To be successful, you should be an expert. Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world. Education, most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. That Put that in between your ears. Young, listen, young people, young people, settle down. It's going to be all right. Hallelujah. But you're going to have to put your time in, focus in. I know the multitasking is cool and you can do a whole lot of things. But the thing about it, how well can you do them as it relates to competitiveness? It, we, we need to understand that we are not comp competing only against the person sitting behind you in front of you in the classroom. You're competing with the whole wide world. And people from over everywhere else are competing for the job in your back door. So you have to become that expert. So when we begin to talk about the tools of success, 
Uh, you are your master tool. You are that cornerstone and your spiritual foundation needs to be intact. Your educational foundation needs to be intact. Thirdly, your mental foundation, your mental foundation, Philippians 2 and 5. Y'all know that? Philippians 2 and 5. For those that don't, I wait, go 2 and 5. Philippians 2 and 5. It says, let this mind, let this mind, let this mind, uh, a Greek word, phonio, or um, let this mind, the way you think, the way you judge, be in you, your judgment, which is also, was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus was social. Jesus loved people. Jesus didn't judge people. And Jesus healed people. Uh, your social skills and your emotional stability. Do that. I mean, do they have to pull, put you in a corner? Uh, you may be very smart and, and also spiritual, but when it comes to being around people, do you like people? Do you, can you stand to be around people, people that don't think like you, that don't look like you, don't sound like you, uh, they don't have the same culture uh, or characteristics that you do? But they, I mean, they are God's people. Uh, you have to understand your social skills, your social and your emotional stability has to be intact. If you're going to be a great soul winner, you're so, it's good that you know all of the verses of the Bible. It's good that you pray every morning. But are you, can you relate to people? So the greatest tool is you. Remember your social skills, your emotional stability, social skills, emotion, your social skills, your emotional stability. Uh, the greatest tool is you. Your foundation should be firm. The deeper the foundation, the more you can handle. Let me say that again. Your foundation should be firm. The deeper your foundation, the more you can handle. What do you mean, Pastor? Spiritually, the deeper your foundation. Spiritually, you, you need to stay close to the Lord. You need to stay uh, in your word. You need to meditate on him day and night. You're not taking, uh, hey, you know, I know it's summertime. I know it's springtime. I know it's spring break, fall break, whenever you're watching this. And you're like, you know, oh, God knows I love him and all that, but I got to just let my hair down. I got, listen, you take your hair off and put it on the bus and, and rest or whatever you need to do. But you still do not want to take a break from the Lord. You're, the deeper your foundation is, the more you can handle. Educationally, keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. I know you got your, your uh, GED. I know you got your diploma. You got your degree. You got all that. Keep learning. Keep pushing. Seniors, keep reading. Keep pushing. I know, yeah, I know you retired. That's all right. Keep pushing. Keep learning. Keep challenging yourself. Hallelujah. Keep that great matter functioning and pushing. Amen. The, the moment you stop, the moment that you back off of it, it's like this. It's a skill. So when we talk about power, he gives us power, Holy Ghost power. He gives us a skill set. He gives us a zest for information, for knowledge, to understand how to do. When 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 the uh, they were in the upper room and the Holy Ghost came and they spill out on the street and they began to speak in other tongues, they began to speak in the tongues of those people, all those people that were there for the celebration. That was a skill that was some powerful information things people here here it is so your spirituality has to be powerful your education foundation has to be powerful keep pushing keep pushing keep reading hallelujah your mental and your emotional stability has to be intact uh, and another tool of our success so I'm almost we're going to do this with this is our first part so your first tool is you. And we have these subsets, okay? Spiritual, educational, mental. Though, and keep digging. You never stop. You never stop learning. 
You never cease to be a, be a student. You're still pushing for success. Okay. Follow through. Remember, follow through. Pastor, well, how long do I swing this bat? How long do I swing this golf club? How long do I swing this pickleball bat? I, you swing it until you can't swing it anymore. Amen. Bit hallelujah. You may be a little older right now, but somebody needs your wisdom. Somebody needs your uh to be you to be a mentor to them. Somebody needs you to be a spiritual mother, father, grandfather, grandmother, however that is. How you have so much God is investing, God is keeping you, He's strengthening you, and He's giving us great opportunity. Okay, so as we deal with the tools of success, the first tool is what you, the first two, come on, put it in the chat. The first tool is me, the first tool is me. The second tool, check this out, is vision. The second tool is vision. Discover what you were put here for your purpose, your purpose, your vision. Genesis 1, 26 said, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Your purpose, your purpose. What's my purpose, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. Your purpose is to become a ruler. Put it in the chat for me. My purpose is to become a ruler. You wonder why the enemy keeps coming at you and keep challenging you and setting traps for you. He sees you becoming aware, becoming cognizant of what your purpose in life is is really about. Isn't that something? Uh, uh, the, the, the more you read, the more you pray, the more you build relationship with the Lord, the more you'll find out what your purpose really is. The more you follow things like what, what you're watching Holy Nation right now, Empowering You for Life Bible Study, you'll find your purpose. I say, I don't know what my purpose is. Your purpose is to become a ruler. Now, ruler rules over a whole lot of things, a whole lot of subsets. But we're talking about a ruler to have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birth. Now, it's not for you to try to dominate over people. OK, it's not for you to try to dominate over people. I didn't see any of that, anything in that passage about people. It said fish and birds and heaven, and livestock, and all these things, the creeping things, and all those things, but no people. You're not to dominate or attempt to dominate that, you, you know, you're not a master. You are a ruler, okay? Okay, vision. When we talk about vision, uh, go uh, uh, verse 27, Genesis 1, verse 27. So God created, remember, man in his own image, and in, in the image of God, he created him, male and free male. Okay, so so God created man, mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male. He created humanity. He created humanity, male and female. He created them. As a ruler, part of our purpose is to create. Oh my goodness. See, see, here's the thing uh, uh, for for you to create, you're going to have to become an expert for you to create. You're going to have to love what you do. To create, you're going to have to love. So here's first, the two, these two things. What do you love? What would you do for free? What do you love? What what would you do for free? Then write that down and pull it out of uh, uh, the, the the spiritual state. What is it that you love? If you're going to rule, you, 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 your purpose is to create. What do you love? What is it that you love? So Y'all put it in the chat. Tell, tell, tell us what do you love to do? Because what you love to do, you would you will you will do it for free. 
of what you love to do. You have you may may be getting paid for it now, but you have done it for free. You got to find out what that is, because here's the thing. It, it's in you. It's a seed that has been planted in you uh, It's part. It's your purpose. And it must you must give birth to that seed. It has to come out. It has to come out. You know, I said, well, no, I ain't going to do nothing. I don't do nothing for free. You don't love what you do then. You don't know what your purpose is. OK, go to Habakkuk 2 and 2. Habakkuk 2 and and two. I am Superintendent Andrew Perpina, and we got about 10 more minutes. We thank God for all of you tuning in. Continue to like and share. Continue to like and share. Uh, if you're on Facebook, share, share, share this teaching. If you're on YouTube, share it and subscribe. Hit that button right now. Have but good two and two. And the Lord answered me and said, write uh, Greek word Kathab, or decree, or describe, or inscribe, or prescribe, record, register the vision, uh -huh, and make it plain upon tables that he may run that. Re you write so they can run. You write, you must make it clear. So here's the thing. Write it, decree it, declare it, register it, record it, prescribe the shaza, the vision, or that is mean that that is that divine communication. You 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 allowing the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to use you to write that divine communication. You know, some things are just good things to do. Some things are, um, you know, if you didn't do them, nobody would miss it. Just a good idea. But then there are those God ideas, those, those that come from divine inspiration, divine communication, those things that humanity, listen, humanity is waiting on. Have you ever, ha, has the Lord ever given you a divine inspiration uh, while you were asleep in your dream state? And you woke up, you woke up, you like, okay, but you did not exert yourself. What do you mean, Pastor? You woke up, you like, that's good. And then you said, I'll write it down when I get up in the morning. And you went back to sleep. And when you woke up the next morning, you could, you, you knew you had a divine communication. You knew that the Lord had visited you, but you could not remember. Uh, to save your life what it was, that's because you didn't exert yourself. You got to, God will try you, beloved. He'll try you because check this out. When you don't do it, he's that same angel, that same divine communication is going to go to somebody else across the world, next door to another state. And one day you're going to be sitting at home watching television, what, listening to the radio or whatever it is, and you're going to see that thing. And when you see it, you're going to remember that's what it was. And that's of success, success, tools for success. You are the tool. You are the tool. Your vision is a tool. So uh, have back at two and two. Don't forget it. And the Lord answered me and said, write uh, the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Continue to read. So you are a tool. Your vision is a tool. And my last one for these last six minutes, your effort is a tool. Your effort, your effort, E-F-F-O-R-T is a tool. Go to Proverbs 16 and 3. Proverbs 16 and 3. I hope this is blessing uh, you. I hope this is strengthening you and helping you because we want you to be successful in whatever you do. God, and he created you to be successful. He created you to have dominion and become a ruler over these things that he has impregnated you for. You have, you have been designed and created for greatness. And the Lord is giving you tools. He has given all of us tools that we have to understand what they are. See, if you, if you, if you give a baby $10,000 worth of tools 
and and sit that baby in front of that 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 toolbox. You know what that baby is going to do? That baby is going to use those tools like they are a toy. Yeah, yeah, because they don't have the wisdom, they don't have the knowledge, they don't have the understanding. So, so the Lord, His thing, He's not going to just give you a whole set of tools and you don't know what to do with them. But He gives it to us based upon our ability. That's why you have to continuously learn. You have to continuously build relationship. You have to continuously educate. And as you show yourself, what's that word? Faithful. Add that That's how your faith works. One step at a time. As you continuously do that, then he begins to he'll show you how to use it and what it's for in your life. So Proverbs 16 and 3 says this. Commit. Uh, thy works mm -hmm, unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit, uh, that Hebrew word is galal, galal, commit or trust thy works. And the works, uh, Hebrew word there is mosh or your accomplishments, your actions, your arts, listen, your business, your occupation, commit your business, commit your, I'm talking to somebody, commit your occupation. Listen, quit fussing and, and complaining about what you're doing. The, the key is to trust it, what you're doing. Trust your works, trust your occupation, trust your actions and your art unto the Lord and your thoughts, uh, the, the Hebrew word that is maksha, or, or your, your inventions, your plans, your ways shall be established. What do you mean, Pastor? Okay, here it is. Effort. You do, if you are in the Lord, there is never wasted effort. If you love the Lord, there is never wasted effort effort. If you're sowing seed into the kingdom of God, there is never a wasted effort. Hallelujah. You are planting. You are sowing. You are trusting your effort. You're committed. You got to commit your works, commit your accomplishments. Hallelujah. Not about the certificates all on your wall. They're good. They look good and all that kind of stuff. Your art and your business, and your occupation, your whatever your hands uh, find to do, what? Do them. You commit that unto the Lord and your inventions, your plans that where they came from shall be established. Okay, so hard work and efforts, listen, are virtues that you cannot do without hard work and effort. You're not wasting your time. You may have been doing it 20 years, and I know nobody said anything. You may have been doing it 10 years. I know nobody said anything, gave you a little trophy, a certificate, or nothing. They could have printed it out on the printer, but they didn't. But your hard work and your efforts of virtues that you cannot do without to become successful. And don't worry about man paying you. Hallelujah. You just do it and the Lord will repay. He will repay. He will, he will repay. Hallelujah. Some people have, have passed on successful. Hallelujah. And they may not have a dime. They may not have a mansion. They may not have a limo or whatever, a plane or whatever. The, their name may have never been on CNN ticker, but they were successful because their efforts were given uh, to the Lord. Amen. Hard work does pay off. And and, and here's the thing. Uh, you can put this in your in, in, in your ticker too. Uh, uh, Hard works pay off. Hard work for the Lord pays off right now. It pays off right now. You got to know whatever you do for the Lord, it's paying off. It has paid off. Matter of fact, God is so, He'll bless you so much. He'll pay you before you do something else. He'll pay you in advance. And we thank God. So don't wait to understand how things are exactly done before you try them. It's called faith. Work hard to learn and understand success comes to those who put in hard work and dedicated effort. Let me say that one more time. Success comes to those who put in hard work and dedicated effort. 
mistakes, you know what to do with your mistakes? Charge them as tuition. You know, when you're registering for school and they got uh, they got a charge there for your books, they got charged for matriculation, they got a charge there for tuition. Listen, mistakes in your life, charge them as tuition. Just make sure you didn't fail that class. In other words, in other words, you learn from your mistakes. Okay. Albert Einstein said it like this: a person who never made a mistake never tried anything new. Hmm. A person that never made a mistake, never tried anything new. You are, beloved, a tool. Your vision comes from you is a tool. Your effort, your work ethic is a tool. And we got some more, but we're going to pick up here next week with some more stuff. But, but listen, success, your tools for success. You are that tool. You are that tool. Your vision is that tool. And just keep on. And we're drilling down. Keep these notes now. Keep these notes. Uh, I am Superintendent Andrew Perpiner, uh, Jr. And I thank God for you, uh, for tuning in. Don't forget to share, even at the end of this. If you have not shared, share this teaching. Share this teaching. Share it, share it, share it, share it. And we thank God for you. Holy Nation, I love you. Uh, our partners and our friends, our ambassadors, I thank God for you, your support. Continue to pray for as, us as we d- go on our journey and all of uh, uh, the church around this world. I thank God for you. Continue to pray for us, support us as we go forward. Holy Nation Church of Memphis. It, it's 3333 Old Brownsville Road, Raleigh. Barlett area. Uh, We are here every Tuesday live at 7 p.m., but of course you can hit the replay, hit the replay, send it out and see what Perpina is talking about. It is a long E, Perpina, P-E-R, P-E-N-E-R. I got so tickled. Somebody was calling my name. They said Pepper, Peppermint, uh, Problem, whatever. And I, I've i had this name all my life. So I is not much you can say that I have not heard. And it is funny to me. It's a gift from God. Isn't that something? Amen. Because I promise you, you won't forget it. But we thank God for you. Listen, I want to do this. We're going to pray in a moment. But I want to challenge you to sow a seed, a uh, $20 seed gift. Uh, if this has been a blessing, bless this ministry, bless this ministry. We are a family church with a global vision. We started with seven members uh, 19 years ago, and God is truly blessing by his might and his power. I thank God <clears throat> for my lovely wife, uh, supervisor, lady. Uh, my, I, I'm trying to get used to say Mother Shirley Pepina, but uh, supervisor Shirley Pepina of the Tennessee Central jurisdiction uh, under the leadership of our very capable prelate, Bishop Brandon Burnett Porter. We thank God for all of you. I've been in Central Tennessee and everywhere. Uh, uh, let's let's pray, but make sure you sow that seed. Sow that seed. You can sow that seed in our Giblify Holy Nation Ministries. Go there and hit the favorite, and you can sow there, or you can go to our cash app. Uh, dollar sign Holy Nation Ministries. You can go to our website, holynationmemphis.org. Follow that contribution at, uh, prompt, and you can download our wonderful mobile app. Uh, that go to it if you got your Android and your Apple devices. Download it today uh, at the App Store and the Google Play Store. So you can keep up with Holy Nation. You can keep up with me and what's all going on around the globe as we go forth. Let's pray. Most gracious and eternal Father God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen. We thank you for what our ears have heard. We thank you for what our hearts have observed. And God, just continue to bless us, lead us, and guide us. These that have been listening, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. And God, we thank you. Hallelujah for each and every soul. Uh, continue to be blessed is our prayer in Jesus name. And listen, I just want to say this before I go. Uh, uh, Don't forget that uh, every fourth Saturday, fourth Saturday, we have nation night in our college. This upcoming nation night, uh, fourth Saturday is Greek and college night. So you want to make sure you come 
Uh, if you if you can't stand a whole lot of praising and a whole lot of worshiping, and and kids laying out at the altar by the power of the Holy Ghost, don't come, don't come, don't come. But if you, Hallelujah, you want to come and be in a part uh, in, in the atmosphere where God is being praised and the Word is going forth and the young people are giving vent to the Spirit of God, you come on out. You come on out. We thank God for you because they, this this is where they are. come as you are. Come as you are. And God will bless you right where you stand. And we thank God for you. And until next time, I just want to say this. Everything, and I mean everything, is going to be all right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for visiting us on social media. Listen, if you are looking for a place where you can get the word of God for your everyday living, Holy Nation Church of Memphis is the place you need to be. Visit us on our social media. Pastor Andrew Papiner is always teaching the word of God. Uh, our Bible study is at 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights. And then on Sundays at 10 a.m. You do not want to miss it. There is a word in the house just for you, for your everyday living. Also want to encourage you to sow a seed. We do ministry here at Holy Nation, and this is good ground. We go out into the communities, and we believe in reaching the families. Uh, that is the parents, the children, the grandparents. But we believe in reaching into the community and sowing back and sowing into ministry. Just go to Giveify on, on, on our website. I think the information should be there at the bottom. Go out, sow a seed. This is good ground. We look forward to seeing you at the nation soon. Team drivers, WEI is hiring. Great pay, benefits, comfortable hours. Call now, if you want to get on the open road and see the country. Join the professionals, at Warhorse Enterprises Incorporated. Team drivers, with doubles and triples endorsements. Call now, for that change you have been looking for. Remember, W-E-I, where we treat you as family. Through technology, the local church can now become global. In Peace Mobile App has developed a state-of-the-art solution which can help your church move into that next level of ministry. Contact us today and schedule a Zoom demo for you and your team. Remember, In Peace is the app developed by pastors.